Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. Let's talk about strength training versus size training. A lot of folks think these are the same and there's a ton of overlap, but there's not exact overlap, especially as you become more advanced. And then we're gonna talk about how to get the best of both. And there are some really good ways to do that. They are very similar, okay? Is the fact that bodybuilders at a high level, professionals, and powerlifters at a high level, professionals, don't train the same. Yes, they both train in gyms. Yes, they both use barbells. But the differences are, gee, really massive. Most obvious, loading differences. Basic strength, what we in sports science call basic strength, the fundamental ability to produce force, not peaked for competition, which is like sets of one to three reps, but basic foundational getting stronger and stronger type of training is best done in the roughly three to six rep range per set. That Those sets build basic strength the best, right? Overall hypertrophy is actually best stimulated in the five to 30 rep range, right? If you stick to the five to six reps thing, you say sets of five and sets of six or just sort of in that general range are good for both. Uh, I would bet, and there are some good studies confirming this, and certainly almost every bodybuilder can tell you this, if you really try for extended periods of time to get all of the same hypertrophy volume from just sets of five to six, never doing sets of eight or 10 or 20, then the fatigue accumulates really fast and really are too high for those low rep numbers. For a month or two, it can work, but it's not sustainable. Next up is volume. Strength training is really fatiguing per set, but in order to do your best in strength training, the amount of total fatigue you can have at any one time needs to be lower. You need a high degree of preparedness. On the other hand, hypertrophy training doesn't generate a ton of fatigue per set, right? Uh, which is which is great because you can do a lot of it. Um, but it doesn't also require, right? It doesn't also require uh, a high degree of preparedness. Something like eight sets of quad work per week on a strength program is like a lot of work. On the other hand, that might just be a little bit above what maintains your quads for hypertrophy. And something like 16 sets of quads for that same person is totally possible and close to optimal for muscle growth. But 16 would just not even be survivable for a week on strength training. Progression differences. This one's super straightforward. Intensity, loading progression is everything in strength. Is it gonna be more reps? Is it gonna be more sets? No, no, no. It's almost always, mostly, going to be increases in load. On the other hand, for hypertrophy training, doing more reps grows more muscle. Doing more load grows more muscle and doing more sets. Should I add, for example, 15 pounds to the bar, but zero sets next week? Or should I add five pounds to the bar, but add a whole set next week? So the adding 15 pounds, definitely the right choice for strength in this example, but the five pounds in one set, probably the right choice for hypertrophy. Now, adding 50 pounds will add hypertrophy. It's good, but not the best. The best hypertrophy probably comes from raising volumes quite a bit, sometimes raising repetitions, but raising the load a little bit more slowly. In hypertrophy training, it's a tool. In strength training, it's everything. What about frequency and undulation? Here's the deal. In hypertrophy training, you need the local muscle to be healed, to do another good job of training again. And you don't even need the joints and connective tissues to heal completely. Because if you train heavy on Monday, for example, sets of five to 10, on Tuesday, you can do the same exercise for sets of 10 to 20. And you're probably not gonna get hurt. And you're probably gonna get a good hypertrophy stimulus because the muscle is healed. And the joints are like healed enough, connective tissues healed enough. But because you're dropping the load, you're reducing how much weight you're lifting, you're not really at risk of much of anything. On a Wednesday, for example, right after that Tuesday, you can again do sets of 10 to 20, but just switch up the exercise. And all of a sudden, you're hitting different parts of the muscle, different parts of the joint, and everything's fine. And then Friday, you might do sets of 20 to 30. Again, your muscle has recovered each time. Your joints and connective tissues have not, but the sets of 20 to 30, they don't even, they're too light to beat up your joints and connective tissues. The whole thing heals by the end of the week, and then next week you restart that progression. So with hypertrophy training, you can squash a lot of highly effective stimulative training many times in the week, and as long as the muscle is recovering, neither are the joints and connective tissues, tissues beat up as much because the rep ranges on, on average are higher, the loads are lower. With strength training, it's very much the opposite. Stimulative sessions, for them to actually cause strength improvement, you need much fuller recovery. 
a better strength sort of weekly undulated pattern would be on Monday doing like sets of two to four reps at a nine RPE, really, really tough, really, really heavy. Wednesday, you do sets of four to six reps, still strength, but this time at an eight RPE, it's more volume, less loading and less relative intensity. So you, Friday, there's no way you're doing hard training in this example, at least for this advanced lifter. You might do sets of two to four again, but at a six RPE. So in this example, you have two stimulative strength sessions per week, fundamentally in one recovery session to get ready for next week. Whereas in the hypertrophy example, you have four stimulative hypertrophy sessions and you try to do strength that many times, you will burn in the sun. Exercise selection differences. Strength training is usually defined by a set of exercises, not just abilities or parts of your body. People usually talk about increasing their squat, not just making their legs generally stronger. That means we have to do that movement often, sometimes, that means doing other exercises. If you do legs Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you do squats, then hack squats, then leg presses, you probably get better hypertrophy overall in your quads than if you do squats, squats, squats. If you're trained with like two or three exercises, like squat, front squat, maybe one other derivative, occasional I'll do a leg press. And my bodybuilders train with nine or 10 different exercises because they get better overall development, plain and simple. You don't develop strength on cable pushdowns. You don't develop strength on lateral raises. You need more compound variations. You might develop strength better on JM presses. You might develop strength better on upright rows. So if you're choosing exercises, there's gonna be at some point where you have to give up the best hypertrophy exercises to do more strength or give up the best strength exercises to do hypertrophy. And maybe you switch to hack squats or leg presses. But as far as making you strong, hack squats and leg presses, because they're a little bit more isolation based, they're not as compound, they don't require a balance, not as much of a neural drive component, usually can't load them as heavy safely, they're just not as great for strength. If you insist on training strength and hypertrophy at the same time, here are some recommendations. If you're advanced, we'll get to that in a bit. You phase potentiate. What does that mean? It's a super complicated term. It's actually super easy. For two to three mesocycles in a row, like three or four months, you do hypertrophy training, but because you wanna be bigger and stronger in the long term, you stick mostly in the six to 15 rep range, but you start each session with strength building exercises four sets of five to 10, and then later do exercises that are in the 10 to 15 rep range. Gives you a really good, you do strength training, in which you do two to three mesos, mostly sets of three to six, right? At your strength maximum adaptive volume, which could be like set, you know six sets a week of something instead of 10 or 12. And you will keep some hypertrophy work in very low volumes, maintenance volumes, like several sets a week of uh, stuff to train your lats or your biceps or your calves, side delts, stuff that's not adequately covered by your strength lifting, but you're gonna keep those in sets of 10 to 15. So there's no room for sets of 30 or anything like that. You're just gonna wanna do relatively strength focused stuff, but also keep the hypertrophy stuff on the back burner. It's not gonna cost you a lot of it after that, you take a one to three week active rest, active recovery phase, really heal everything up, and then you go right back in to hypertrophy training and then strength training, and the cycle repeats itself. That's probably the best way to do it. Let's take a look at three examples of how concurrent or hybrid programming would look, just examples. Current quad session would be you do squats for three sets of six reps, decent hypertrophy stimulus, but notice it's six reps, not three or four. So it's a little bit more volume, a little bit more hypertrophy. And after you leg presses for two sets of 10 reps, 10 is pretty heavy. So you still get a decent strength stimulus. Early, if, if you had like two or three sessions like this in the week, earlier sessions in the week would be a little bit more strength focused, slightly lower reps, less accessory sets. Later in the week, what about strength? A pure strength session for quads that still conserves your muscle mass would be squatting only, because that's your strength exercise for five sets of four reps. Four reps definitely uh, over a long term will increase your strength better than if you just do sets of six, so it's better than concurrent. And it's five sets, way more practice, right? Still the same number of sets here, but it's way more practice at the actual lift, squatting for two sets of eight reps, right? Two sets of eight is not gonna get you a ton strong and it's just two sets. We have more fatigue left over, more volume. Our next three sets are gonna be 12 in the leg press. So which one of these three approaches is best? I mean, two of the approaches have to be done at the same time. Beginners can just do sets of basically five to 10 reps. They build so much hypertrophy and so much strength off such a minimal stimulus. People that have been training for less than a few years when they begin to be intermediates, which way to go, mostly size, mostly strength, or somewhere in between. 
hybrid concurrent approach can have them sort of mix strength and hypertrophy in the same weeks and the same sessions, and that's okay. But as you become advanced, that split really starts to happen where you have dedicated hypertrophy phases true hybrid programming starts to work very poorly for you and you have to split it up to get the best of both worlds. Folks, I must have said get the best of both worlds at least 20 times here. I'm gonna stop saying that shit and I'll see you next time for the next video.